I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, show you some of the uh, Taylor polynomials and approximations in Maple. Okay, so the first one I want to show you is the uh, Taylor polynomial for, or actually in this case, the Maclaurin polynomial for the uh, function e to the x. Okay, so Maclaurin, so Maclaurin is just a special type of Taylor polynomial where we're expanding around the origin. Okay, all right, so I've got restart, um, got a plot, so I loaded the, the commands for the library. Okay, so we define our function e to the x, and here is the first uh, the first uh, order or the degree one polynomial. Okay. Well, this is for the Taylor polynomial. Okay. All right. So here's what it looks like. Okay. So we have e to the x. That's the one you see in blue. And then we have 1 plus x. Okay. So the thing you have to keep in mind is that this approximation gets better and better as you start to look around the origin. Okay. So in fact, for the first degree, this is just a, this is just the usual tangent line. Okay. So if we want to get a better approximation, then we need to get more information, right? Okay, so we need to use this, use the uh, second order, okay, or the second, the second degree, okay. So in this case, and this one I did, it, so these two I did actually in the derivation in one of the videos, okay. So this is the other one, okay, for a second degree, okay, so. Right, so here is e to the x, okay, this was for 1 plus x, and then we have the second degree. So this is for a, uh, for a, for a parabola, okay. So again, if you look closely, okay, all right, so the second degree polynomial, okay, is getting a lot closer to e to the x uh, than compared to uh, this line here, that x plus 1, okay. Okay, so for third degree, this is what it looks like. Okay, so meaning that we need we need the uh, for the third degree we need the third degree polynomial uh, third degree derivative. Okay. Okay, so we have e to the x. Okay, and this is for that was for the linear. Okay, this is for the parabola, and this is for the cubic. Okay, and then this is for the fourth degree. Okay, so the fourth degree one, okay, that's the one we see in cyan. Okay, so what you should what you should be noticing, okay, is that the even degrees are always on the top, okay, above e to the x. The odd degrees, okay, those are on the bottom. Those fall below below the curve of e to the x. Okay, so it's alternating back and forth. Okay, and this is a general. Um, this is a general pattern we see with these type of Taylor polynomials. Um, in this case, these are Maclaurin. But remember, Maclaurin is just a special type of Taylor polynomial. Okay. So each time we introduce an order, okay, we're getting closer and closer to e to the x. Okay. So if we continue to do this, then uh, we can go. We can do this forever, and that way we can build up. Um, we can build up a polynomial that will approximate e to the x. Okay, so it turns out that um, the uh, the polynomial that we're using for e to the x is actually going to converge for all of x. Okay, so its radius of convergence is basically going from minus infinity to, inf to infinity. Okay, so that means for any, okay, if we write this, if we look at this as a series, it will converge to the function e to the x, okay? All right. It's obvious from here, okay? It's obvious from the picture, but um, there's a little bit, it's not, I mean, it's obvious here, but the thing is it's not uh, quite conclusive. We know it's converging, but is it is it really converging to e to the x? Um, and that's something that we have to talk about later, okay? And that's with the residual functions, okay? So if the residual functions are converging to zero, then yes, this is converging to e to the x, okay? So yes, it's obvious that this is converging visually, but we can't always rely on the visuals, okay? Especially in math, okay? 
but this is what's indicated. Okay. Um, in Maple, this is how we can this is how you can calculate the Taylor polynomial. Okay, so you have your function. Uh, there's a built-in command called Taylor. So I'm storing that into a fourth degree. Okay, so we have our function. Okay, and we want to expand it at zero, and we want to do the if we want the fourth degree, then we say this is going to be five. Okay, because Maple will automatically put on the residual term here, and that's the big O notation that you see. Okay, and if we want to use this, okay, so if we want to use this as our fourth degree, then we have to convert it. Okay, so we do convert of the previous output, and then just say polynomial. Okay, and so that that way we get this result. Okay, and it will drop the big O notation so that we can use this later on. Okay, so here's a table. Okay. Um, this shows you exactly what's happening here in terms of the data. Okay, so the first row is just the x values. So there's just some x values close to zero, and then you have the corresponding function values, and then the approximating polynomial values. So as you get closer and closer to zero, you can see that the values start to approach, start to equal to each other. And that's what we expect from these type of Taylor approximations. Okay, the further you are to zero, okay, the 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 closer you the closer you get to zero, the better the approximation. In fact, at the center point, okay, at the expansion, it should always the the value, the function value at the expansion point and the polynomial value at zero should always be equal. So that's something else we'll talk about. So for for a series, for what's this is actually what's called power series. So for a power series, the value should always be convergent. Okay, at um, at the point of expansion okay so here's some others okay example this was for natural log which okay I did in one of the videos okay so it looks like this so the natural log is the one that you see in blue okay and then you have the others are the polynomials so we have a polynomial of well in this case yeah so polynomial so the first one is just a constant Okay, I believe it was for yeah, x equals to 0, which is not very good at all. Okay, and then we have the next one was for x, um, let's see, for x minus 1, okay, which is the 1 in green. Okay, and then we have x minus 1 minus uh, 1 half x minus 1 squared, okay, which is the 1 in purple. Okay, so that's for the second degree, and then we have the third degree. Actually, this is the third degree, sorry, and then this is the fourth degree one. Okay, so again, you're getting alternation, right? You're, they're alternating around the function of natural log x. Okay, so we have the the ones above. Okay, like these two are odd degree. The ones below, okay, are even degree. So this one here is second degree, and this one here is fourth degree. Here's the one for cosine x. Okay, so cosine x function is the one in blue. Okay. All right. So the the first degree is just going to be a first degree approximating function. It's just one again. That's just the tangent line at zero. And then we have one minus x squared over two factorial. Okay, that is the one in in green. Okay, and then we have the fourth degree. Okay, okay, and then the sixth degree. Okay, so the thing about cosine x is that if you notice, um, you have right. Uh, basically, this is so you have the. Uh, Let's see you have the even right it's always the even degrees okay all right okay so it's for the even degrees okay for sine okay if you do an expansion on a sine it's going to be for odd degree okay okay um, this down here this was doing a, uh, a Taylor expansion on on cosine but we're expanding around one instead of zero, so this was this is actual Taylor expansion, and we're doing it for sixth degree. Okay. 
right? So this is what it ends up to look like. Okay. Um, this is for Sinex expanded about Pyro 6. So this was uh, this was done also in another video. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The one in blue is the sine curve. Okay. And then we have the the first degree. Okay, the first degree was for x equals to one half. The next one was for, um, so this is expanding, in this case expanding about pi over 6, so the next one was this one, okay, for this polynomial. So that's the one we see in green here. Let's see, is it, yeah. Okay, and then the other one, the next one is for degree 2, okay, and then degree 3, okay. All right. Okay, and this is the one for, okay, this is the polynomial, the Taylor polynomial of sine x expanded at x equals to pi over 6. Okay. The other one was for natural log, so uh, you have natural log x plus 1. Okay. Alright, so this was for a fourth degree. Okay, so here's natural log of x plus 1, and the fourth degree looks like this. Okay. So this was just a uh, simple case where we're taking and evaluating point 1 into the fourth degree polynomial, so we get this value. And if the actual value of natural log of 1.1, okay, is this one. So, so when we substitute, we're using, so we're, since we're using point 1, then our function that we're using is x plus 1, because when you substitute point 1 in here, we get natural log of 1.1. So that's why we're using natural log x plus 1. So that will give us a better approximation if we expand around uh, around the value of, of 0 in this case. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's why, because we're expanding around 0, that's why this, good, this, this gives us a good approximation because point 0.1 is close to 0. Okay. And this last part, this is the Taylor polynomial expanded at, actually this is the uh, McLaurin polynomial, expanded at 0 for natural log x. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to uh, send an email, I'll send this to, to this maple file to, uh, to y'all in the email. I know that some of you are working on, for the project, are working on the uh, learning about the how the calculator approximates functions or evaluates functions so some of, in some of y'all's paper y'all talking about the quartic algorithm and how it relates to the Taylor polynomial so I think this will help uh, help those you know that are working on this okay that are doing the uh, that are working on the paper for the uh, for the, uh, looking at how the calculators use or approximate functions okay so I'll send this out to y'all